Did you know that your body and a cheesy pizza share a common enemy? Okay, so allow me to introduce you to the notorious duo of Hashimoto's and gluten. Okay, awful joke, but way better video and episode we're about to dive into here because we're going to get into the seedy underworld of autoimmune diseases with some jokes and some humor along the way, of course. And of course, what's in it for you here? Okay, so you need to stick around to uncover the secrets to deep healing that could potentially save your life or at the very least make you feel really good while being able to maybe enjoy gluten. We'll see here. Okay. So as we're going through this year, you know, I want to be able to either give people who have been at this a recap on Hashimoto's and gluten, or maybe you're new to this year. Either way, let's start with the basics here. Hashimoto's, thyroiditis. Think of it. It's like the irritating neighbor. Okay. Who wants to mow their lawn at 7am on a Saturday. Okay. Waking you up being like, what the hell? But in this case, your immune system is that really obnoxious neighbor, okay? And your thyroid gland is the unsuspecting lawn there being treated here, okay? And your immune system here, in a bizarre act of misguided enthusiasm, decides to get up all up in your thyroid's business here, leading to this attack here, okay? And this then leads to inflammation, and then damage, and then eventually a underactive lawn or thyroid in this year, okay? Underactive thyroid or hypothyroidism here, and then your thyroid just struggles to keep producing hormones, and that leads to a lot of ruined things, okay? In this contorted analogy, it ruined your sleep. In this analogy on your health, it ruined your thyroid here, okay? And that's going to lead to a lot of downstream effects here. Now, why does this overzealous landscaper of your immune system go on the attack in the first place? Okay, is it drunk? Uh, did he just want to use a little bit of gas? Did he get carried away while listening to an audiobook? You've been there too. You've missed your exit home listening to an audiobook. Tell me the truth. But the thing is, we may never know in that analogy, but for your immune system, I can tell you kind of the, the two main reasons here. Okay, but before we get there, just kind of boiling down the basics. Your immune system will only attack proteins it does not recognize here just like a landscaper will only take a weed whacker to weeds okay except that one time you know my mom's flower bed just got kind of destroyed there and that's just another childhood memory back in the corner but essentially your body will damage its own proteins and then this becomes foreign proteins inside of you okay they're foreign but they're not really they're foreign looking and then this gives your immune system proteins to attack okay and then the two reasons coming back one is a concept known as molecular mimicry, okay? We'll dive into that next. And number two is something super secret I'm gonna tease you with, okay? Okay, just to get you to watch the whole thing. I have your best interest in mind, so it's okay. Okay, we're gonna, all information and value here today. So number one, molecular mimicry, not mimicry, mimicry in Hashimoto's, okay? So again, another contorted analogy here, your immune system, Again, it's like a bouncer at a swanky nightclub, you know, the nightclub, the one with the, the red velvet, you know, thing there, all right? And it's looking out for any shady characters that are trying to crash the party here. And it's pretty good at its job, but sometimes, again, it becomes overactive here. And so molecular mimicry is this phenomenon that there's someone like dressed up like a movie star here, okay? And this will then trick your immune system into acting a different way. Okay, so like, again, this analogy, the bouncer, it sees something, it mistakes it for someone else, and then it has a certain action here. So typically, uh, like a bacteria, a virus, they can closely resemble proteins in your body, then your immune system, ever the vigilant bouncer, sponsors the foreign, uh, spots the foreign protein, okay, and decides it's time to like throw down here, okay. However, again, in that sense, like if you've ever seen a street fight here, there's going to be some collateral damage here. Okay, and then that causes an issue, and then your thyroid gets caught in the crossfire here. Okay, coming back to your thyroid here. So there's certain proteins in gluten, like gliadin, that closely resemble proteins in your thyroid gland here. Okay, and if you have a sensitivity or intolerance to gluten, or if you're human, your immune system might start attacking it like this over eager bouncer who mistakes the gluten protein as someone who caused trouble last week at the nightclub here, okay? So it gets into this attack mode and causes collateral damage and inflammation here, okay? And that's essentially how molecular mimicry works because specifically, you know, there'll be an antigen here, looks like a little rabbit, comes in and it's actually mistaking and looks like something that's actually 
foreign, but it's not, okay? So another thing where something that's kind of foreign, but your immune system reacts as if it's foreign and bad here, okay? Now, th 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 there's more to the story of this, obviously, because molecular mimicry is but a small part of it, okay? But before we dive deeper into gluten, I want to have a little tangent, like a little detour. We're coming back. It's a quick detour on celiac disease because this is important to know about as well. So celiac disease, really simple. Autoimmune disease, like attacks your small immune system because it's just like your own, you know, heck, Game of Thrones version, okay, where gluten is the villain here. These analogies are ridiculous. And pretty much now we have a plot twist, okay, because celiac disease is the most well-known gluten-related villain, but it's not the only one on the block here. Okay, there's also non-celiac gluten sensitivity, NCGS, if you want to sound really cool. And you want to, again, imagine your immune system is not just an annoying neighbor here, but now this annoying neighbor has an identity crisis and is a confused detective here. Okay, and again, when it comes across gluten-containing foods, it mistakes it for a threat and goes into attack mode here. Okay, and then again, the crossfire happens. Okay, so in celiacs, this is full-blown, like 10 out of 10. And think of non-celiac gluten sensitivity, like a six out of 10, a five out of 10. Either one of them will lead to the systemic inflammation and crossfire that sometimes your thyroid gets caught up in, but I just wanna paint the picture. Celiac is like way up here. It is a separate entity, but it's on a scale of severity here because some people will have both and we'll talk about why that is next. Now, when your thyroid gland is getting damaged here, there's there's gonna be some, some issues here, all right? Because as your thyroid is the thing that controls all of your metabolism, literally, it sends out thyroid hormones and tells your cells, hey, operate at this level today, high or low, or in somewhere in the middle here. And so when it does this, your brain's gonna, you know, shoot out TSH, right? And it's going, to, your thyroid gland is then going to produce T3 and T4 here, okay? And go to all your cells here. And it's really important to know, really important to know, let me like just zoom in here. T3 and T4 selectively turn on your mitochondria, okay? Take that little factoid, put it put it in your front pocket, okay? Leave that for now. We're gonna come back to it. And then when you have Hashimoto's going on, it has this domino effect of health issues that come back to your mitochondria here, okay? So weight gain. If your mitochondria are not working, you're not burning fat as fuel here. Pretty simple. You're gonna be tired because you're not producing energy within your mitochondria. You're going to... I mean, have mood swings, you're gonna be depressed because thyroid hormones stimulate the production of neurotransmitters by turning your mitochondria on. So that's not happening. You're gonna have the anxiety, the swings, the depression here. Same thing for brain fog, all right? Again, if mitochondria are not working in your neurons, it is damn hard to think, okay? Hair loss and brittle nails. Why is that? Because again, mitochondria live inside both of those places here, in your nails, you know, you know, if you're watching, kind of, well, that camera didn't really focus very well, but you're going to have mitochondria in those little nail beds there, and they actually produce water, okay, and help that oil actually come across and coat your nails. Very similar in your hair, because again, the oil in those glands is a mitochondrial production. Starting to see the theme here. All right, and the list just goes on and on and on, whether it's like cold intolerance, uh, menstrual dysregulation, like your thyroid is really the master regulator of metabolism, which is why things can get so crappy with Hashimoto's here, all right? And that's why being able to understand just one thing here today about gluten is tremendously helpful here, okay? So gluten-free diet, let's just get to it because again, there'd be a lot of benefits if that worked here, okay? And I just wanna share something with you. And this is kind of completely unrelated, but we're here, might as well just get intimate. I was totally gluten-free before it was trendy, all right? So many moons ago, I lived above a Subway sandwich shop. I'm not sure if you've ever had the displeasure, but if you smell pseudo bread, like bread and yoga mats every single day, you are going to start having like a mental spiritual vomit at the thought of bread here. So that's when I went gluten-free, totally unrelated to, <laughs> to anything here. But I will say, really helped, you know, better sleep, all those pieces, but did not take away the smell of that godforsaken Subway sandwich shop. Now, back to you, gluten-free diets. Yes, they have been shown by research to reduce inflammation, improve symptoms in some people with autoimmune diseases, not everyone though, but especially Hashimoto's thyroiditis, okay? So why 
is this here, okay? Because a lot of people will ask, does gluten really affect Hashimoto's? Yes, yes it does. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise here, okay? Because studies have shown, again, gluten sensitivity and especially Hashimoto's are a real thing. And the reason for this is that, think of it like poking a bear here. You have this Hashimoto's bear and gluten then comes in and pokes this bear and makes this thyroid storm even worse here, okay? And now we'll talk more about this, but again, gluten in the theme of pizza, we must talk about dairy, all right? I, I did not mention pizza just as an attention grabber. I kind of did, but it was also as an attempt to bring in dairy as well here. I want you to be this one full stop shop for your thyroid here today. So, and this is kind of like asking like, is a paper cutter or splinter worse? They, they both kind of suck here because gluten is yes, the main culprit, but dairy also contributes to the systemic inflammation, okay? And then again, what did we say earlier? When your thyroid's inflamed, it'll attract the immune system more. So if you bring in more inflammation through gluten, through dairy, it's going to then make that worse here. Okay, not just dairy, but also soy and processed foods. Those are kind of the two biggest ones. Processed foods, think like things that contain a lot of sugar, okay? And pretty much for both of those, it's the processing piece that causes that of where it's going to bring inflammation, but also soy and processed foods, they're essentially like mitochondrial toxins, okay? Remember that little mitochondria thing we put in our pocket here? It's coming back out just for a little bit. You hurt your mitochondria, you hurt your thyroid here, okay? And especially for dairy here, because there's gonna be certain things like lactose that can cause gut inflammation. And then also casein proteins that are also gonna cause gut inflammation here. And then that will raise systemic inflammation to cause more thyroid being attacked here. But that only happens again, if your thyroid was already susceptible here, okay? That's why all of us cheese eaters are not dead yet, okay? Give us time, because I will tell you one fact, everyone who has eaten cheese has died. All right, write that one down. That's a circadian health exclusive there. Um, and so the fatty acids and the, the sugar here in terms of processed food, totally got away from that. So the sugar, again, is a mitochondrial toxin. It's like diesel fuel. You put a lot of sugar in, you get a lot of energy, but just like for the same reason you don't put diesel in your Honda Civic, it will cause a lot of damage to the engine here, okay? And same thing for a lot of the fatty acids, usually a lot of omega-6s inside processed foods that cause a big inflammatory reaction here, okay? So you should start to see a theme going on here, okay? Things that damage your mitochondria make Hashimoto's worse here, okay? So do you need to go gluten-free? Not really. Now, I'm just saying that as a matter of free will because this is the internet and not Guantanamo Bay because you can you can eat bread while you're listening to this. I'm not going to cry a whole lot about it. And if you really want to double down, you can put some cheddar on that. But what I can tell you is that you will need to remove these foods to kickstart the initial healing process here. Okay? You gotta. Okay? Is it a forever thing? No, I wouldn't say it is. But you need it to kickstart the healing process. Okay? And a lot of times people, when they kickstart it, they just kind of stick with it because it's a lifestyle change that we'll talk about how to make that easy for you soon here. Now, again, if you're reading in between the lines here or listening in between the lines, I've never really said gluten or dairy or processed foods cause Hashimoto's, okay? These foods just potentiate a problem that's already there in the first place here, all right? These foods are like throwing gasoline on a smoldering campfire here. And in this case, this represents this campfire, the underlying issue causing Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So it's already there, it's just manageable. But then when you introduce these things, gluten, dairy, processed foods, but think about everything else, stress, right? That will then cause these things to flare up here, okay? Causing a raging inferno and really being able to make things just far worse here, okay? So that's why you just can't blame those things, but it is something to seriously address here. Okay, so you wanna cut back on that and be able to remove those triggers. So how exactly do we get into like tailoring your diet with that here? Okay, now before we get there, I know a lot of people, they may ask a few pointed questions here. All right, this is for my technical academic snobs. Are people with Hashimoto's gluten intolerant here? No, they're not. 
Okay, not everyone is gluten sensitive or intolerant by different criteria, but what I can tell you from the research, there's a higher prevalence of gluten sensitivity among those with other autoimmune disorders or thyroid disease here. Okay, so that's a fact there. Does gluten cause Hashimoto's? I already told you that. No, it doesn't. It just exacerbates it. Okay, just to kind of more do that. And then the other thing, can Hashimoto's turn into celiac disease here? This is very controversial, what I'm about to say. Kinda. Kinda is. Okay? Because you see, people with one autoimmune disease have a higher risk of developing another one. Okay? Why is that? Because there's a common fault in that core issue, right? That's what we're gonna talk about here. Or your mitochondria. Another really important one question Does gluten cause high thyroid antibodies? Yes. Okay? Because again, it's pouring that fuel on. So, like, you can literally test this here. Like, if you're considering going gluten free, Get your get TPO, thyroid, antiglobulin, get all that tested. Okay? Go gluten free. Three months down the road, retest. See where those things are at. Because that will tell you is that a major contributor for you or not here. Okay, that's a really important thing you can track there. I know we're going like lightning distinctions here, but there's just a lot to cover here. Okay. So that's something you can kind of see to gauge is this going well here. Because when it is, it's you know not the easiest process here. So let's kind of make this easy for you here. So we're gonna cover a few steps to help you go gluten three. Step number one, this is optional. Throw a tantrum, okay? I said it, give yourself a moment. Mourn the loss of your baguettes and, and your brie here. Scream into a pillow, have a good cry. Take a picture of bread, put it on your wall, okay? And maybe watch like Friends, you know, some, or some other sappy rom-coms. You're gonna take something that's been a part of your life, not knowingly, and kind of let it go here, okay? And just kind of move on. It's, it's literally like a breakup here, okay? So um, have that little moment if needed. Like I said, totally optional. Then step, step number two is to read labels like a pro here, okay? This is really where you gotta put your Sherlock Holmes hat on here and scrutinize food labels like your life depends on it. Because there's things that are easy, right? You see wheat on there, okay? Pretty simple, bread. Okay, don't need a college degree to know that one. But the small things really add up because when you're in a really inflamed state, just seeing like um, wheat as a filler on something, okay, which will be more towards the end of a food label because on a food label, this may surprise you, maybe not, but they put the things on the food label in the order of the total amount. So when there's a lot of wheat like bread, it'll be like ingredient like one, two or three there, okay, like behind water or something. But when things may contain gluten, like some random protein bar, like they have wheat, it may be all the way towards the end there. So you gotta read the thing all the way through. Same thing for dairy. And it will have different names. Like uh, some may literally say gluten. Wheat, rye, barley, things of that nature, or even like wheat, uh, protein, things of that nature there, you would want to avoid. Same thing for dairy here. Now, obviously you can just also look for the gluten-free label because it's, it's a thing now. Okay, um, but even so, beyond gluten, for dairy, for soy, especially, and like all those different sort of omega-6 rich fatty acids, right? Pretty much any seed oil, really. You want to be able to weed out of your life, well, life, if you will. And as you're doing this, go in layers. Be easy on yourself. It doesn't need to be this overnight thing here, okay? Okay, now step number three is to then be able to find what are you replacing that with here? Okay, because you're not just going to cut everything out, uh, but there's a whole universe of gluten-free and dairy-free yumminess out there for you. Okay, it's this is a good age to be in because like this is now a thing. There are a lot of things. There's like I mean, there's a whole line of like uh, uh oh geez, what you call it? Mexican food, Tex-Mex? I don't know, but like there are gluten-free, dairy-free like tortillas you can get out there. Okay, or you know even Hamburger buns that have gone from like horrible to like bearable here, even for bread here, okay? Dairy milk to almond milk, cashew milk, cashew cheese. Like there's all these things that are pretty easy substitutes, okay? Now they're obviously gonna be a little bit more of an investment, but like this is your freaking health here, okay? And again, like I said, this isn't a forever thing as well, okay? So step three, find those things, get lost in the alternative health food store, or just you know look up things online. Because step number four is also learning how to cook with these things here. Now you don't need to be a master chef here, 
but pretty much just like, you know, getting out there looking at things, gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, like those will help really save your sanity because all those things like those quick like swap outs, like gluten-free bread, they are expensive, but also like they're still not like the most nutritious thing. So looking out there for gluten-free, you know, blogs, YouTube channels, there's like now a gajillion of them or a gazillion here. And then you just get in there and like, be prepared to fail. Be prepared to like really suck at making these things. Okay. It's a learning curve. It is. Okay. Take some time. You're not just going to go down to like all meat here. You're going to really get to a place of where taking it easy and then it eventually becomes a lifestyle here. Okay. It's easy. And step number five again, remember, it's not a freaking prison sentence here. Okay. You're doing this for yourself. You're doing this for your health. You're doing so you can show up better at work, be more present at home, have more energy to work and be able to be at that place where your thyroid is not becoming a place where you're stuck on medications for life here. Okay. So just embrace the challenge and really find the discovery here and really know it's a part of going through this here. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to share with you is that this is not heal the underlying issues. And we'll get into that after the next most important question we'll have. Can I eat gluten-free oatmeal with Hashimoto's? Can you? Because heaven forbid I take away your oatmeal. And I'm here to tell you, most people with Hashimoto's can safely eat, of course, there's gluten-free oatmeal here. Now that's an extreme sensitivity because oats technically do not contain gluten, but they're often in factories that can get cross-contaminated with gluten here. So someone with celiacs, I wouldn't even try out oats here, okay? I would just choose something else because unless you're like certified gluten-free, it, it's a little risky here. Now, so this is something where like a lot of people are like, well, how's this really play out in the real world here? And I can tell you about a few people we've had. So, and all the names are changed. So, you know, I can tell you about Sarah, had Hashimoto's, a lot of medications, acupuncture, but was still like exhausted, foggy headed, achy, and decides to go gluten-free here. Okay. And like, it's something where like quickly within weeks, energy levels up, mental clarity back, aches and pains, like eight out of 10 to like a four out of 10 here. Okay. Now that's a great start here and being able to see some shifts there. That's why it's a starting point here. Okay. Being able to have, you know, more energy there or like John again, Hashimoto's again, taking a toll on his work and personal life. And he's Italian. Okay. So bread, pasta, like that's the thing here. Okay, and being able to find this substitution works out for him. Again, dramatic shifts in a relatively short amount of time here. Okay, like even to the point where like his family, all Italian, starting to kind of see the benefits and even starting to make those shifts for the, like the whole family. So he's not feeling like exiled over there with like his gluten-free pasta here. Now, here's the thing. There's a slight twist for Sarah and John here. Yes, they avoided gluten, but that's not all they focused in on. All right, because that's because the core of all this is with your mitochondria here. Okay. This is secret number two. It was like long delay to go, but here we are here. Your mitochondria, they are those cellular powerhouses and they pretty much call the shots here. Okay. Because if you remember from biology way back then, they make energy here and that's what keeps your body running smoothly here. But when they go rogue, uh, it doesn't turn off well here. Okay. Cause there's going to be a few things that happen. One, they churn out more free radicals. Remember what we talked about with sugar? Same thing here. More free radicals cause more damage to proteins, gives your immune system more things to attack. That's why people will rack up multiple autoimmunities here. And then your immune system is just more overreactive as a rule here. Okay. And then the other big piece, when we think about your immune system, there's like these, think of a police officer, or a police manager or squadron supervisor. I'm not familiar with the hierarchy of that, but someone who's in charge of the police officers who go out into the field and are enforcing here. So this is a T regulatory cell. This is like all the other effector cells here, you know, T helper, et cetera here. The T regulatory, if that doesn't have enough energy from mitochondria within it, it can't properly regulate these cells. And then the cells are out there causing too much damage because they're not listening to their boss here, okay? And then this causes, a lot of issues here, okay, as in more attacks. And then the third thing is that your mitochondria down here, think of it like a, a, a feedback loop, your thyroid tells your mitochondria to produce more energy because your thyroid will sense when your body needs more energy, right? 
But if your thyroid tells your mitochondria to produce energy and it doesn't, guess what? Your thyroid then goes into overdrive and just tells your mitochondria, hey, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. But when the mitochondria is not picking up energy production, your thyroid just starts to scream and send out more and more thyroid hormone here. Now, this will go on for too long, okay? And then this causes your thyroid to be worn out, get damaged, and be more vulnerable to damage here. And guess what happens? Again, it's coming back. When your thyroid is susceptible, the immune system will attack it because it's weak here, okay? So that's why getting your mitochondria right helps the whole thing here, okay? Yes, you need to take out gluten, but also your mitochondria are that core issue underneath here. That is the foundation for healing your thyroid and overcoming Hashimoto's here, okay? And in terms of how we're really doing that, because that's like what Sarah, John, and, and so many others have had, it's really being able to, you know, be in a place of where, one, you really take out gluten, and then being able to focus on your mitochondria health here, okay? And that is like a whole nother video for a whole nother day here. And, and really the major thing here, because, you know, how the saying goes, like one too many things to <laughs> take in on a given day, really just give yourself a look on that gluten piece for you here. Gluten, dairy, soy, all those processed foods here. Because you do need to take that out, and then that allows you to get into those deeper levels. Like put out the house fire, start repairing the house here. Now, some of you who maybe, maybe you're already at that level here, one thing I could recommend is you could consider actually booking a one-on-one -on -one health strategy session with our team, and we just explore like, okay, how can we actually apply those principles of mitochondrial healing to you here? Okay, and basically, let me find the link to that one. Um, I can just tell you what it is. It is ochnow.com forward slash talk here. And yeah, ochnow.com forward slash talk. You should have a little banner that pops up. Couldn't find that, but it's super simple. ochnow.com forward slash talk. And basically there, we just develop a personalized plan. We kind of talk about like, okay, what's going on with you? What are your issues with your Hashimoto's? what's not working, uh, what have you been trying, and then like also identifying your goals, like what gets you to a healthier, 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 happier life. I totally combined two words there. Uh, and, and it's something where like, you know, it's not really for everyone, right? Because we want to be able to help people who are like really in that active place, get to a place where, you know, they, they just, they just know they need to help and want to be at that higher level of function here. Okay, and we can always talk about how we can help out with that. And if not, no worries, just take the lessons you've learned here, check out our other free content, and you'll be able to continue to pick up all those pieces here, okay? And again, if you're interested in connecting with us for 45 minutes, go to ochnow.com forward slash talk here, okay? I am Dr. Dylan Peckis, Optimal Circadian Health, and I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you on another one, all right? Bye.